Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuck. We're here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, we'll recap Falcons and Bears. Good victory there. The formula continues to work, and this is what happens when you put all of the burden onto your quarterback. It's all next, Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Hitting Hard is brought to you by Bet Online. We ask you to head to youtube.com, put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your search browser. When you get there, hit that subscribe button, be a part of our ever growing community. We're just about at that 5,000 subscriber mark, so be a part of it today. Leave us a comment there. We are free and available to download on all of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Odyssey. Leave us a five star review. Roku and Amazon Fire, you of course can check us out on those platforms. And don't forget, give me a follow. It looks like Twitter's here to stay at jmch316 on my twitter page well a good victory for the atlanta falcons yesterday 27 24 over the chicago bears and it's crazy to think about the fact that this team is now four and two at home they have a chance this year with three home games left they could potentially win as many or more games this year at home than they have the last three seasons combined and i'm not counting the victory in london last year even though that's a home game I'm talking about going inside the control environment of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So Arthur Smith talked about the idea of they have to be better at home. You have to figure out a way to win at home. That was a good sign yesterday that they continue to protect home field advantage and have a chance now. Look, with three games left, we'll see. But a couple of those games are not against the best competition in the NFL. This is where you have to start when you talk about how am I going to turn my franchise around? Start by winning at home. All right, let's talk about a few things. Mariota, thought he played well yesterday. He had some big plays that helped win football games. We talked about four to six plays in a game. The throw to London, that's one of those. The scramble for the touchdown, that's one of those plays. So they didn't ask him to do too much. He doesn't have to get outside of his comfort zone, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But I thought he played well enough that he was a part of the reason why they won that game. Cordell Patterson, let's give him a shout out. Congratulations to Cordero. Look, he is now the all-time leading touchdown return guy. He has eight touchdown returns of over 100 yards. The next closest person has three 100-yard touchdown returns. So that's a staggering number, but congrats to him. In an era of we're not going to have a ton of kickoffs, I would tell you, you talk about records that will not be broken anytime soon. That record for kickoff return touchdowns, that may stand for a long, long time. Maybe after I'm gone and and putting the box in the ground and everything. That's one of those records that's going to stand the test of time. And I thought at times he was the best player on the field. You know, the, Even though his stats say 10 carries, 50 yards, the way that he runs, finishing off runs, the big fourth down run that he picked up going on the right side. So many things that he does in a football game and beating on and pounding on defenses and making key runs when the Falcons need it. You know, look, his numbers just on the surface don't jump out at you. But when you watch the game and watch the impact of what he does, you can see how important he is to what the Falcons' identity and offense is. Now, let's talk about the defense. I thought that was a really good performance against a team who has been red hot offensively in the Bears. Now, I said this on the pregame radio show going into yesterday. The Falcons needed to hold Justin Fields under 100 yards if they were going to have a chance to win that game. Fields ended up with 18 carries for 85 yards, 4.7 yards per carry, did have the touchdown run. We're going to talk about where he's at coming up in a little bit here as well. But I thought the Falcons, especially late as he was getting beat up and banged up, did not let him go crazy running the football. You know, you might let Fields get away with either running a bunch or throwing a bunch, but you can't let him do both. And I thought the Falcons did a good job of that. And we talked about, look, Fields is a guy who will take some sacks. Well, they got four sacks against Justin Fields yesterday. Fields is a guy who can potentially give you a turnover too. All right. They found a way, like so much of their formula for how they found success this year, is turnover late, sack late, 
you know, change it up, and their defense does it. Again, I think their defense is better year over year. They're not a great defense, but they're opportunistic. That's a lot how 2016 went for this team. That was not a great defense. That was not a top 10 defense and all that good stuff. But they had a guy who could sack the quarterback and led the league in sacks, and they had a defense who could be opportunistic, and when they needed a turnover, could get a turnover. That's what this defense does. So I thought the defense played well as you know as well as anything in that game yesterday. It was good to see Young Way Koo get back on track, right? Made a couple of field goals. The one was 53 yards, right? Nice to see him. Look, I don't care if it snuck in by two inches or 17 feet. He kicked it through at 53 yards and won the game. Was good to see him get back and not worry about any confidence issues or anything like that. So look, overall, in all three phases, the Falcons played well. And I saw people saying, well, it's the Bears and this, that, and the other. Well, again, y'all told me about how great Justin Fields and the Bears are and all this stuff. That was a game that going in, could they have won? Could they have lost? They could have done either, but they found a way to win. And I'll continue to beat on this drum that Arthur Smith is a high-level coach. And they win because their coach puts them in ideal situations to succeed. They don't get too far out of what they need to do offensively, defensively, and things like that. And now look, five and six, you're still in the playoff hunt. Four and seven, there'd have to be a different conversation. But at five and six, if nothing else, it certainly squelches any conversation about should it be Mariota or Ritter, because you're not changing quarterbacks right now. But five and six, you're in the hunt. And look, that's what we that's what I want. They want to win. I wanted to win. I don't want to sit around and watch a two and fifteen team, you know, muck their way through a season. So give the Falcons credit, you know, in a game that you feel like those kinds of games can swing one direction or the other, Falcons found a way to get it done and pulled out a victory against an offense that has been hot of late against a quarterback that's getting all kinds of pub and attention for what he's done. But just because the Bears can't close out a game, that's a them problem. We found a way to close it out and get it done. I want to talk about my friends over at Bet Online. Listen, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports wagering information. So what I want you to do is head over to BetOnline.net. In fact, take the mobile device that you got you carry around in your hand everywhere, right? It's like attached to your face, right? It just hangs on wherever you go. Take that mobile device, head to BetOnline.net today. Check out all of the – first, start with all the information that they've got. You want news, podcast info, stats, scores, whatever. Everything's available at BetOnline to get you to be a smarter sports better. Then, when you're ready, jump in on the action, right? You like Georgia this weekend? They're a 30-point favorite over Georgia Tech. How do you feel? Think Tech can cover after what they did on Saturday, or is Georgia going to run them out of Athens? You can head, you can get involved in all of the action. You want NBA, college football, NFL football, NHL, college basketball. Everything is available at your fingertips. So head to betonline.net today. Check out all of the information that they've got there. Get in on the action and be a part of it. BetOnline.net is where the action starts. So we talked about Marcus Mariota and the fact that, you know, I thought he played well yesterday, but they don't get him out of his comfort zone. And I'm going to continue to be on this drum, shaking my camera everywhere, that there is a formula for how they succeed. And that formula is, continues to be, stay in that 20 pass attempt. So again, I know when I give this stat, random happenstance, pure coincidence, nothing to see here. It's just a figment of my imagination, all this kind of stuff. When Marcus Mariota has 20 or less pass attempts in a game, the Falcons are four and one now. When Marcus Mariota has 21 or more pass attempts in a game, they are one and five. I know, random happenstance, pure coincidence, nothing to see here, but it is the formula. And that doesn't mean that Mariota can't make a play to help you out. That doesn't mean that Mariota can't do some things to help you win a game. 
But the more that you expand his role and the more that you ask him to do is where you get in trouble. That's why when I watch these games, I keep the box score up with me. As I'm watching the game and I'm checking it all out, all this kind of stuff, I keep the box score up. And I watch and I look at that. You know, like how in the Jerry Lewis telethon, they get the tote board updates every so often, right? I watch that pass. I watch that attempts number. I look at Mariota and I look at the attempts number. You know, when I look at ESPN.com, you know, it's got the box score and it says on there, C slash ATT. Now, that's not a digital phone service. That's completions slash attempts. And I watch that ATT number and I watch it as it churns and burns and moves and grinds and all that kind of stuff. And once it gets above 20, once you start to see blackjack 21, then I start to get nervous because it's becoming apparent that, look, first off, there is a formula. There is a pathway to success, even with the limitations of what our quarterback does. And we talked about this last week. You know, they're running almost twice as many pass plays over 20 yards this year as they did last year. And they're going to have not much more than half the number of pass attempts when all is said and done. But when they keep him in his zone, and what we see yesterday, how about the 17-yard play to Kyle Pitts? Short, quick route, one read throw. Short, quick route, one read throw. Get the ball out of your hands. You know, how about that? How about the um, late in the game when Demir Bird caught that pass where they were blitzing kind of from the left-hand side, right? What did he do? Catch it, one read, watch for Bird, quick throw, go. That's where he's at a success. But when you start getting him into 25, 28, 33, it's all out of the comfort zone. And the fact that they won a game for the first time of less than 167 yards is good. But notice what stayed right on track. The one number that stayed right on track. No, no, none of this. Flatlined is that 20 pass attempt number. And I told you about this two weeks into the season. I told you about you got to get his pass attempts down. You can't put the ball in harm's way. And whether they've run it for a lot, whether they've run it for a little, you know, they've started breaking out of the mold on certain things. But the one thing that they have not broken out of the mold on when it comes to winning a football game is keeping Mariota in that 20 attempt range. Flat line right across. None of this. Flat line right across. And that's going to be the formula. And that's why we talk about, you know, listen, Desmond Ritter, this and the other, that's all fine and dandy. Maybe there'll be a point if they get knocked out of the playoff picture that we'll see him. Maybe we won't because we may be in the playoffs all the way until the end. It may be that we have a shot to win the division because remember, we play the Buccaneers at home the last game of the year. So there may be a shot. So there's a definite chance that Ritter will never play. They're in it to win it right now. And what do they do? You keep that 20 pass attempt number level right across. And that's your sweet spot. I don't know how much more ways I can describe it to you to make you understand that this is where they have to live. Even if they're down two touchdowns, 17 points, almost three touchdowns, whatever, you have to live in a flat line. It's where it's got to be. Because if you start getting into, whoop, you start going that direction with all your attempts, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. They've won one time when he's thrown it for 21 or more attempts. And you know who you beat? You beat the god-awful Panthers who stink. Panthers stink. That's your one time that that broke the rule. But 80% of the time when you've kept it like that, you've won. And by the way, the one loss was the blowout game in Cincinnati where it wouldn't have mattered if he threw it five times or 50 times. They were never going to beat the Bengals on that Sunday. So look, I've said at this point, I'm okay with the idea of playing Mariota 
the rest of the season and we're going to see what happens with it. Okay. Not talking about the future. The future is today. They're not thinking past this week against Washington. They are the ultimate one week at a time team. And with that, you have to do the things that put you in the best position to win. And that's keeping your quarterback flatlined and keeping him from getting too far out of what the comfort zone is. It's a pathway for success. Give Arthur Smith credit that he's finding a way to win with a guy that has the deficiencies because he keeps him flatlined like that. All right, I want to remind you, uh, you make Hitting Hard with John Trucker your first listen every day. Make Locked On Sports today your second listen. The biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, they are available on YouTube, Odyssey, wherever you get your favorite podcast platforms. Check them out today, Locked On Sports today. You saw at the end of the game that Justin Fields was beat up, banged up, you can look at his body language and they had to haul him off on a cart. He's getting MRIs. You know, who knows what the prognostication is, but the Falcons beat him up. And, you know, look, I know a lot of people were excited about the idea of seeing the Falcons lose and fields play well to say, see, see, we should have taken him. We should have taken him and all that kind of stuff. Justin Fields is a really good player, but. It's not influencing the way that the Chicago Bears finish games. They've had five chances now to finish and win games that they're not finishing. You can tell me it's the quarterback's fault, not the quarterback's fault. Here's what I know. I spent a decade defending Matt Ryan in those same situations where every one of you blamed Matt Ryan for, well, he lost it. He did. Matt Ryan did this and that and the other. When you're the quarterback, you take all the blame. You take all the reward. That's why the whole league is set up around quarterbacks. All the rules are quarterback friendly. All the money goes unevenly distributed to quarterbacks. They get the lion's share of the money. Why? Because there's not a single solitary position on the football field, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, pick your day. Not a single solitary position on the football field that influences a game, that has the ability to influence a game more than your quarterback, not your kicker, not your wide receiver. Nobody can influence a game more than what your quarterback can. And what you saw yesterday was the accumulation of all of that attrition of all of the hits that he's had to take over the last four or five weeks or what have you. Because that's how their offense has to run. You can say personnel, scheme, this, that, and the other. Here's the sad part, though, if you're a Bears fan, because I got this argument with people on Twitter. Oh, well, Fields did this. Okay, but they didn't win. They're three and eight. Well, that's not the quarterback's fault. The quarterback's always going to take the most responsibility. They already fired the GM that drafted Justin Fields. You know, he's in our front office now, right? He's hanging out eating a a ham and cheese sandwich on rye in our front office doing, I I don't know what, because we have all their cast offs and everything like that. But that's the reality of the NFL. You win or you lose. That's how you, that's why GMs are fired. That's why coaches are fired. That's why teams don't pick up 50 or because you win or lose in the league. I can either win with you or lose with you. How much money am I going to get if I, you know, how much money am I going to give you if I can't win with you? And yeah, it sounds like I'm knocking Justin Fields. I think he's a terrific young player, but he's having no influence on them winning games. They've lost four games in a row. That's not easy if you're an average franchise in the league. By the way, in a year where the NFC is mediocre at best and the Packers suck, Green Bay Packers suck right now. And the NFC is a joke in some, I mean, it's so mediocre that you can't take advantage of it. And when you put that much burden on your young quarterback's shoulders, You're going to set them up for failure. So I I don't believe that the right pick was Justin Fields at number four. Run first, get out of the box, and and take off with the football. Don't last in this league. How many times have we said the words NFL, not for long? Because if that's you think your pathway, it's great, right? Hey, my fantasy football team does great. Hey, look at the ESPN highlight. And then you click over, let's see here. 
let's click on the box score and it's, oh, we didn't win. Oh, we've lost four in a row. Oh, we now sit dead last in the entire mediocre NFC in the playoff standings. Oh, that's welcome to life of being a quarterback in the NFL. I had one guy that tweeted me, he said, well, you know, Fields did more than Mariota did. And, and you know, I'm like, yeah, but they didn't win. He had his chance. He got the ball back, could have driven down the field. Well, his play calling and all that. Well, I thought y'all told me that quarterbacks, you know, when, when y'all told me that Matt should have optioned out of throwing the football, why didn't Justin Fields option into something? See how funny this is when, when it's your guy and you want to defend him, you'll find a reason to defend him. When he's not your guy, you'll throw him under the bus. I'll give it to you fair and straight. You know, Justin Fields has had no influence on turning the Bears into a competent organization. That can be owner, front office, this, any other, right? Matt Ryan took an incompetent coach, and that's the best I'm going to tell you about Dan Quinn. He's an incompetent coach, head coach. All the stuff he did in year one, he repeated all of those mistakes in year six. He's not a competent coach. But they overcome all of that. The quarterback and OC figured it out, and they got to a Super Bowl. Not easy to do. It's not easy to overcome some of those things. And that's the challenge Justin Fields is going to face. So did the Falcons make a mistake? No, they didn't make a mistake. By the way, we're, we're going to you know see later this week what happens. He said after the game, I'm hurting. I'm hurting pretty good. That wasn't just what the Falcons had done to him. That's an accumulation, right? There's an old saying in wrestling that says you only have so many bumps on your bump card, meaning that you can only get tossed on your back so many times before the accumulation catches up with you. That that bump card that they like to joke about, right? The theoretical bump card, you only got so many of those on your card. Quarterbacks only got so many direct shots to their shoulder, ribs, legs, thighs, back, head, whatever. There's a shelf life on all of that. Doesn't mean Justin Fields individually isn't a dynamic player. It's fun to watch on ESPN, my fantasy football team. If you know, I don't play fantasy football, but I'm sure the fantasy, oh, look, he's run for all this and the other. But it's not influencing them winning a game. Everybody wanted to argue with me about last week. Well, it, it wasn't Fields' fault. It was the kicker. He didn't make the point. He threw the pick six. Since the year 2000, if you score a touchdown defensively in the NFL, you win 75% of the time. Show me a stat that has a higher winning percentage than a defensive touchdown. So when you throw a pick six, you can miss me with extra points and everything. Falcons didn't make a mistake. And what's happening is you're seeing now they're taking a very talented young man and they're going to run him into the ground. They're going to shorten his shelf life of winning in the NFL. That's why even Lamar Jackson said, you better learn how to play in the pocket, pass in the pocket, push the football downfield. That's the NFL game. This isn't Vanderbilt against Ohio State. This isn't Georgia against Kumquat U. This is the big boys, the best of the best in the league. All right, we thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Trucker your first listen every day. Make sure you make Locked On Sports today your second listen. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day as well. Check them out. Odyssey, YouTube, all your favorite podcast platforms. We're asking you to head over to YouTube and put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your search browser. Be a part of our community by hitting that subscribe button. We're headed toward 5,000 subscribers. We want you to be a part of that. Leave us a comment there as well. Don't forget, free and available. All of your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Odyssey. Check us out. Leave us a five-star review. Roku and Amazon Fire, you can find us there as well. And then follow me on my personal Twitter page, at JMCH316. Back with you tomorrow. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked on Sports Atlanta. 